Okay guys, here's our basic lab setup for this week. We have our optical bench with our elements on it. We have um, a light box over here to the left that is called an, uh, a point object box. Next to that I have my iris diaphragm. You'll see that I've got it turned down to about two or three millimeters here in size. We then have our big plus lens that helps us form a distant object for the next lens is in line. You have your spherical lens closest to the screen, your cylinder lens a little bit farther away from the screen. Notice again that there's a distance between these two, they can't touch. So according to the lab handout, you have to make some adjustments for that. Uh, so make sure that you read over that part and see if it makes sense to you. Then you got the screen over here on the right. Okay, I've turned on the lights and I'm going to show you a little bit about what the light will look like on the screen with the setup. Uh, one thing to watch out for is make sure that your two lenses are about the same height above the optic, uh, above the bench. And also, make sure they're not skewed or twisted in their frames. They have to be perfectly parallel to the um, perpendicular light source parallel to the screen. So here is uh, my image screen with my astigmatic system. And as you can see, if I move the screen to this position, I get a vertical line on the screen. And as I keep on going, I get to a circle on the screen. If I keep pushing it back farther, I get a horizontal line on the screen. So those are my three marker locations with inside, inside Sturm's conoid. I have the line closest to the lens, the near line, the circle of least confusion, and then finally the far line. So that's what they look like on the bench. Your task is to figure out where they're going to be located, what their orientations are going to be, uh, and that sort of thing. But mostly what you need to get out of this lab is a demonstration of the fact that a sphere cylinder system like this does in fact create a different type of image depending upon where the screen is located. Let's go back to this setup again just to make sure we're clear. Again, the idea is that these lenses are not touching each other, so we can't add them up directly just by saying the power of lens 1 plus the power of lens 2 is your total power. You have to figure out what vergence leaves lens number 1 and enters into lens number 2. We have a distant object for this setup, so 0 goes into the first lens, and then it's a minus cylinder, so we have minus coming out of one meridian headed downstream. So you have to use downstream vergence to figure out what leaves lens number 1 and what goes into lens number 2. And it's the vergence going into lens number two that you add to the power of lens number two to figure out what the power is for each meridian. Since we have a plano in one meridian for the cylinder and a minus uh, power in the other meridian, then you would simply take zero, which would downstream to zero, and then the other meridian would be some minus power. You downstream that minus power to figure out what it is here, then you add it to the second lens. So hopefully in the lab handout that makes sense, uh, but you might want to um, Think about that a little bit before you start doing your calculations and make sure that actually makes sense to you. Now, as I mentioned, it's important for all your optical elements to line up with each other. If we look at the screen over here, I've got the aperture way farther open than it needs to be just to show this point, that you can see a big circle of light surrounding kind of a shadow of the edge of the lens and then a big circle of light from the center of my little lens over here uh, in that diagram. So the problem here is that my light source itself needs to be turned one way or the other. Now this light source again gets extremely hot. Please be very careful when you handle it. Only touch it down here at the end. So I'm going to move it side to side like this until my light focuses in the center here. If vertically they are not lined up then you need to move um, the big plus lens up and down until it is centered up and down in that image. And then go back and place your iris into the smaller two to three millimeter position here. Okay, and then you should end up with a nice focused image when it's all done.